You know, the first question that I have, uh, when you look at the kind of disruptions that we didn't get over the weekend, is it fair to say that so far everything is going smooth or maybe smoother than expected? Not much happened over the uh, over the weekend. There wasn't much uh, traffic between uh, the EU and the UK. So a little bit early to say that uh, everything was smoother than expected. Clearly, not many people traveling, not many goods on the uh, on the roads. We'll see what happens this week. But certainly that deal that happened on Christmas Eve really will help. Right. And, you know, when you look at the deal, which, uh, you know, it's, it's hundreds of pages, still needs to be ratified by the European Parliament, by the way, and that keeps uh, being pushed back. When you look at it, who would you say is emerging as the biggest winner? Well, it looks like the... Uh when we look at the small print, the EU got most of what it wanted. It looks like the UK had to, at the end of the day, compromise on an awful lot of the detail around fishing or the clauses on fair competition. Also, the UK didn't get what it wanted in areas like financial services or rules of origin for cars. So there are some questions starting to, to bubble up in the UK. Well, what happens next on financial services? Can we meet uh, what we need to do for electric vehicles? Or are we not going to meet the rules of origin criteria. So some some concerns in the uh, in the UK. It seems the EU did better on the detail. Right. And you mentioned two sectors I want to I want to focus on. The first one, of course, being the financial services industry. The prime minister himself said we didn't get what we wanted. You mentioned that, too. But we could perhaps get it in the future. Is that going to happen? There's talk of in the next three months, coming up with a memorandum of understanding uh, between the UK and the EU, starting to talk about uh, regulatory cooperation in financial services, and also some of the areas of equivalence which have not so far been put in, into place. So at the moment, the UK is only covered by, I think, two of the, two of the areas of uh, equivalence in the EU's uh, framework. Um, there's, there's no official cooperation. So they are supposed to put something in, but this is going to take some time, and it seems like, again, the EU has the upper hand in these negotiations. On the other hand, for the EU, they have London, which is still the largest supplier of financial services into uh, the EU. And so it's not completely a straightforward uh, negotiation. I'd expect uh, something to be in place within the coming months, but I'd expect talks to carry on on financial services for, frankly, for years to come. Right. And would you say the uh, European Union has an interest in dismantling the city? Of course, it would be good business, I guess, for Paris and, and, and Frankfurt. Well, I think the, the issue the EU has is if you dismantle London, are you going to head for a fragmented financial services landscape across the EU? Um, and so whereas I think that the over-reliance on London is a problem, I'm not sure there's an obvious solution for the EU right at this moment as to uh, as to what to do with it. At the moment, um, company financial sector has not um, done what uh, it had been hoped and picked one centre to take over from London within the EU, and that makes it seem like it's unlikely to happen. So I, th I think this is going to be a long game now on financial services between the EU, the UK, and don't write, write off other centres as well, some uh, American institutions saying, look, it's, we might as well uh, serve the EU from New York now. Right. And uh, just to go back on the fish, you mentioned that, too, and we know this was uh, politically a huge thing. Uh, we talked about it for weeks uh, on end, the fish. But it's interesting. Many of the uh, people I've spoken to actually say that the prime minister gave up on the fish to secure more access into the manufacturing. Is that where he's headed into, protecting the manufacturing? Yes, I think that that was, that was what happened in the, la in the last couple of weeks, is that... Um, for example, Nissan was more important to uh, the government. They said they would leave from their big plant in Sunderland if there wasn't a deal. And in the end, that kind of tipped the balance against fish. So the UK government had to accept that uh, it wasn't reclaiming uh, all the fish, that Nissan had to stay. So now there's going to be a big r rush on, I think, to try to get a back battery factory within the UK and be in a position where we could meet the uh, the rules of origin uh, criteria for zero tariffs which is got to mean that we have we have battery um, factory in in the UK and at the moment we don't have any up and running and David just as a final question the government says that it believes there will be an economic rebound after brexit I mean that is still questionable and of course coronavirus is still happening but which areas do you say or would you see are actually uh, areas in which the UK could do better in fact better than the European Union 
it's going to be tricky. I mean, we will have an economic rebound this year, but that's related to uh, to COVID um, and, the, and the rebound from the re from the recession last year. In terms of doing better than we'd done before, there has to be a UK economic rebalancing now after uh, Brex Brexit. I think the worry is that it will be towards services away from manufacturing. That is the UK strength, is that we focus on our strengths in services, but politicians want us to, uh, to focus on manufacturing. So there's still a big question outstanding as to what the UK's industrial strategy is. And we hope to hear more on that within the coming months.